Good afternoon, and sorry for the delay. My name is Jason Quinlan. I'm a third year PhD student at the University College Cork in Ireland. Can I, can I just say three quick things first? I have a terrible head cold and a horrible cough. So rather than me cough through 30 minutes, I, I'd be chewing gum to keep my mouth thing in. There'll be a lot of coughing anyway, right? Uh, second thing is, it, it's slightly tutorial in nature, the presentation. So if people don't follow what I'm saying, or I tend to speak very quickly, just put up your hands and tell me slow down or ask a question. I know it'll push things on a small bit, but it'll kind of help it as we go along. And the third thing, I know now it's probably wrong or not consistent, but I'd just like to thank Roger and Karsten and the panelists and the sessions and uh, session heads and uh, the different pres presenters for just, you know, for uh, giving me a great experience of coming to the conference. Okay, so um, I'm here uh, for my uh, co-authors, uh, Dr. Zoran in Egypt and Professor Srinan in Cork City. Um, and we're to talk about uh, adaptive uh, layer distribution for scalable video. Uh, I, I kind of feel like the, the, the girl that didn't go to the prom because I'm hearing an awful lot about adaptive H, uh, HTTP and I'm still in SVC, MDC kind of land. Um, uh, the research is funded by or supported by the Science Federation of Ireland and the National Telecommunication Regulation Authority of Egypt. And I've got to stop reading the slides. So, um, as we've seen for over the last couple of days, media streaming is everywhere. Um, there's high transmission rates, but low bandwidth availability. I understand the bandwidth is starting to increase, but I feel over time the, the resolutions will increase and the number of users will increase, and you, you can't really say that bandwidth's going to cover all of those things. Uh, we saw um, over the last few days uh, mobile videos now 50%, and it's heading for 70% over the next couple of years. So you know that's stuff we need to consider. Um, so. Uh, I, I, I understand that retransmissions and error corrections help in one sense, but they do increase transmission cost. And again, that, that further burdens the, the, available band, the available bandwidth. And I'm speaking too quickly, sorry. So what I wanted to do and my supervisors wanted me to do is to look at um, ways of investigating the effects of datagram loss on quality. So we wanted to see what users wanted and how quality would change over time, but depending on network conditions, loss, delay, and, and such. But we wanted to do it with very little help. So we wanted to remove the network retransmission mechanisms. We wanted to keep it a kind of one-dimensional overview and, and, and keep it very, very simple. Uh, again, probably not the right thing to do, but it's, it, it kind of helps to kind of get things going, and you have to kind of start somewhere, and this is kind of where we started. So our, our goal, which, which is probably everybody's goal in some sense, is to offer a simple framework f to improve stream consistency and maintain high levels of viewable quality. So um, we chose uh, scalable video coding and multiple description coding as our start point. So um, I'll just briefly go over those concepts. I understand most people will understand it, but those that don't, this is the kind of tutorial section that I, I was talking about. Um, so SVC, it's a standard. It's the MPEG-4 Part 10 standard. Um, it's, it's, I like what it does because you can have one stream, multiple qualities, and you can view either lots of users can get the one stream, either multicast it or look at some of the stuff that, we, uh, that some of the other papers are talking about. And you can pick the resolution that you want. It saves on bandwidth. It's good for networks. It's good for clients to an extent. Um, it has this uh, subset streaming where you can choose the layer that you want. Um, it offers, yeah, so, but th the major problem with, with SVC is that lower layer loss affects higher layer quality. So you can, in this example, you can see we've got four layers. If you were to receive layer three, all of layer three, all of layer four, but lose layer two, or a, a sizable chunk of layer two, the maximum quality you can get is the base layer. So while you're not saving um, bandwidth and, and, and you have this increased transmission cost, your quality is relatively small. Um, yeah, and I just want to highlight that SVC kind of I understand NALs and all this kind of bits and pieces, but oh, oh, in, in, in an abstract sense, it's packetization units are layers. So it transmits its layers and its layers are, are, are its kind of blocks, let's say. So 
Um, I'm just going to take it from SVC to multiple description coding, but I'll just do it in a very slow manner because I just want to explain um, how how MDC is created or, or, or how I look at MDC is created. So with uh, SVC, you take your, we say your standard four layers, and we're going to create a number of descriptions from same. Each of these descriptions contains a section or a segment of the SVC layer. Um, and each of the descriptions in, in MDC contain the, the, the same data, let's say, for each of those layers. So we say with uh, our base layer, our base layer needs to be reproduced in each description because each description, um, uh, the delivery of, of a description mandates the uh, reproduction of, 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 of uh, the base layer quality. For layer two, we can use enhanced layer partitioning where we can take layer two and spread it across two descriptions so that to receive base layer, you need only one description to receive um, quality level two, you'll need two descriptions. And because of that, we can spread the, the cost of transmission over a number of descriptions. As you start to increase through layers three and layers four, you can uh, take this even further. Now, I know, know my design is slightly wrong, but the data that's in the base layer on the SVC side is, this, is theoretically the same number of bytes in the data on the right-hand side. For layer two, it's half between the two sections. For layer three, it's third. So this creates a kind of a section-based um, allocation of the data in the, the SVC layers. So with MDC, then, it uses um, VEC to um, fill in the gaps, let's say. So in this example, I'm using four layers to four descriptions. Uh, there, are, there are an awful lot of different ways to do it, and I've read so many different papers on different mannerisms and reduce, reducing sizes and what have you. But having the same number of layers to the same number of, same number of descriptions to the same number of layers, it gives you this incremental increase in quality for each additional description that's received. So in this example, you can see that the base layer will actually be transmitted four times. Layer two will be transmitted two times, and, and the same for the higher, the higher guys. So, yeah. So again, just to give a, a very brief overview of it, MDC is multiple description coding. It produces, I'm making that, it produces equal important descriptions. Um, it's, it uses SVC layer partitioning and forward error correction. It's datagram resilient due to the level of FEC um, built into the system. And realistically, the only difference between SVC and MDC is that level, or, or byte difference, I should say, is that level of FEC that's, that's, that's built in. And it's, the, it's uh, yeah, as I said, it, it's higher network transmission cost, and the quality that's received at the device is based on the cumulative loss effect of the stream quality, or realistically, the number of descriptions that are received. And in uh, MDC, it's packetization units, units are descriptions. Now, we did a, a small little bit of investigation into the MDC side of it, so I just wanted to see if we could, we say, repacketize and transmit the, the individual sections with each one of the descriptions. Now, in the, in the paper, we don't classify it as, as our work, but just that we've evaluated it because I, I'm assuming somewhere out there someone has done something like this before, but I just never read it in the paper, but I didn't want to take hand up for it, that kind of stuff. So what we did in our, in our evaluation is that we broke the, broke the descriptions into their individual layer sections, and then each one of those is transmitted individually. So it's independently transmitted. Single datagram loss now only affects individual sections. And again, it's the cumulative loss effect of individual sections that affects the quality. And again, the packetization units in this one are sections. So I'll give you a brief run through of how loss can affect quality. So with SVC, if you receive all four layers, you can get quality level four. Depending on which layer is lost du uh, during transmission, will denote the quality of the, the quality at the device. So in this one, we, we've lost uh, datagrams or, or we've lost layer three, and we can only get the, the bottom two layers. If we were to lose the base layer, irrespective of what else is transmitted and received, it's, it, it's unviewable, and we're dealing with um, frame repetition or, or some form of error correction. Um, with MDC, again, it's dependent on the number of descriptions that arrive at the device, um, as opposed to individual layers, because you have a little, you have selection, you have a a section of each in each one of the descriptions. 
So again, layer, quality of layer three is consistent as long as you only lose one as you go through. With MDC SDP, you can start to lose individual sections. And again, it's dependent on the number of sections remaining for a specific layer will determine the quality that's receivable at the device. So with losing a section on layer two in description two, uh, you still have a sufficient number of sections remaining. You have three left over, you only need two to get layer two. If you were to lose a section on layer three, you still have enough remaining of section three to recover what you need. It's only until you start losing sections on layer four that you start to mitigate the quality at the device. Uh, again, there are only simple examples. You can lose multiple sections for multiple layers. So we'll go to our um, work in the paper, or, or hopefully our contribution. Um, so the, the, the principal idea of, of ALD is to it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. We want to increase the number of descriptions that are being sent. So we want to, like, I like the, descri the, the description equ uh, equality of MDC, where it's, it's it cumulative based on loss. It's not specific to a layer. It's not specific to a description. Um, we also want to maintain the, the allocation of FEC sections that, that, that MDC has, but just play around with the bite sizes of, of, of a, a little bit. And again, you, you know, uh, reducing bite allocations of FEC sections. We wanted to, and our, our ultimate goal really is to provide consistent high levels of stream quality over lossy networks. And again, that's what we want to do from the start, just see how loss affects quality. So these, this is our, our approach. Um, again, I, I, I won't have enough time to go through all three, so I've just, I've just taken one. The, the other two I can explain in further detail, it's in the paper, but if someone wants to talk about it afterwards, I'm, I'm happy to talk. It's, it's all I ever do, be frightfully honest. Um, so our, our, our first component is a, a section thinning factor. So realistically what we do is we increase the number of descriptions. So we take our SVC data and we start to allocate the SVC data over more descriptions, thus reducing the byte allocation per section, um, yeah, just re re reducing the byte, byte allocation of uh, the sections per layer. Um, we have, or we then, we also reduce the packetization unit for ALD down to a datagram level, as opposed to the previous study we'd seen the sections and, and layers and descriptions. Um, one thing that I didn't mention in the previous slide, but I won't go back because it's too many animation things, is that the highest, in MDC, you have to receive all four descriptions to get the highest uh, quality. Because of this, there's no major need, let's say, to, to have FEC on the highest layers. But of course, any kind of loss in those highest, in any description, mitigates the quality at the highest layer. So one of the things that we looked at as well in, in our system was uh, including some form of FEC in the highest layers or increased FEC in the highest layers. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't sound as, it's not as bad as it sounds because we have um, a smaller bite size per um, layer section and uh, the, the increased cost of additional FEC sections is, uh, is, is minimal. So, our section thinning, I left this there. So, we, we start with F, uh, MDC FEC. Um, what we have is we have a section thinning factor of zero. So it's um, ALD with an, an STF of zero is MDC, realistically. So we have, we have as, as, as I've explained already. So what we do is we start to um, spread or, or distribute, as we say, the um, SVC data over more descriptions. So we maintain the FEC, the, the, the number we said, the quantity or the allocation of FEC sections, but we spread the SVC data over more. So you can see here in the base layer is now spread over two sections. And if you were to transmit this as it is, you'd only be transmitting two and a half base layers as opposed to the four base layers that were there when STF is zero. So we have our layer byte allocation is now is the layer number, uh, no, sorry, the layer byte allocation divided by the layer number plus the STF value is the, the byte cost per section. And that shows you as we increase it to two, it further increases as it goes on and it reduces the transmission cost um, because of the reduced size of the FEC plus you end up with descriptions that are smaller in byte size. And again, it maintains the, the cumulative effect that the number of base layers or the number of descriptions that are received um, will increase 
quality. The, the one, well, I said, I said a one, but one of the issues with it is, as you can see, you now need to receive a minimum number of descriptions before you can decode the base there. And there's our example of ALD. So we'll just go into evaluation results and we'll just have a quick look at the, our evaluation framework. Um, in, 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 when I was doing my investigation on the side of it, we found it very difficult to find an open source SVC um, server, player, something we could have a bit of fun with, and, but so we didn't. So all my stuff is, is simulated uh, to an extent. We use JSVM to encode. We have eight layer uh, examples. We've, we've, we've tested multiple layers and multiple resolutions, but just the example we have in the paper is eight layers with three different resolutions and a number of um, fidelity qualities for each one of those resolutions. Uh, JSVM produces layer trace files, which we then um, modify and transmit over NS2. So we initially started with JSVM and then we found um, a nice framework called MyEval SVC, which contains JSVM, it's some work with NS2 and some work with SVEF, the Scalable Video Streaming Evaluation Framework. Um, so we use a modified version of, of, uh, of his work to do it. The clips that we've used for this paper are 10 second in length, 300 frames, and we use a number of different clips. We four them clips that we, 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 we primarily show uh, crew.yuv, which is a number of astronauts walking down a, a corridor. Uh, the metrics that we used, as I'll show in the next couple of slides, is we use PSNR to note the difference in qualities between the different streams, uh, the transmission by costs, and the, um, the viewable quality over time, or the transitions in quality over time. So, this just gives an example of transmission costs for each one of the layers, or cumulative transmission costs for each one of the layers. At the end, we have an ALD, our number of ALD descriptions, which are our 8 MDC descriptions plus the STF value. So you can see that the, the transmission costs for the higher layers starts to decrease rather quickly as STF increases, and after a, a, a point, it starts to slow down and slope. But the transmission costs for the lower layers increases because of the number of descriptions that you have to receive before you can decode a base layer. So in our evaluation, it was we used uh, an STF value of six. Um, it, it's just a point where, as you can see, the transmission cost of the higher layers is now getting to a point where additional STF values don't produce uh, any more major increase in PSNR, but it does increase the transmission cost of the lower layers. Um, so this is an example of our um, ALD. You can see the, the, the structure of the uh, initial eight description MDC, and now you can see the additional descriptions that we've created. So we have 14 descriptions transmitted over the network. You need to receive eight descriptions to get base layer, and then one additional uh, description for each initial uh, quality value. You can see we used layers one and layer two are at um, 176 by 144, layers 3 to 5, 352 by 288, and layers 6 to 8, 704 by 576. Uh, these are just a, a quick number table just to give you some um, evaluation results. So you can see with SVC, it's roughly 8.5 megs, its transmission unit is a layer. You have eight layers, average layer size is 3.5 kilobytes. Um, the number of datagrams are down there, and it's comparative byte size compared to SVC. You can see with MDC, it's it's gone from eight and a half to sixteen and a half. Um, number of the, the average byte size of a description is now nearly seven kilobytes, and it's uh, twelve and a half um, datagrams being sent, and it's roughly t twice the size uh, to M SVC. When we look at the, the section distribution side of it. It's, it's the same as MDC, but you can see the level of additional datagrams being sent because you're reducing the, the section sizes and we didn't want any spillover between sections because the loss of a datagram would affect a number of sections as opposed to an individual section, so you end up with a lot more um, datagrams. For ALD then, we're, because of our SDF value of six and our reduced transmission cost, we end up with a transmission cost of 10 point, roughly 10.8 megs. The average, at, at Description size is two and a half kilobytes. We have just over 9,000 datagrams, 
but our relative transmission cost as opposed to MDC has gone from 197% to 120%, so it's roughly 27% higher than SVC. Um, as I said, one of the issues that we had, have had, yeah, I talk in the past. It's good, yeah, so we talk about the paper rather than talk about now, isn't it? Yeah, all right. So we have, uh, we had a problem with, with ALD, and it was realistically the only problem that, that I could see that the, the transmission cost of the lower layers increases as you increase the STF value. And in our example, you can see here, we have a 5.3 meg transmission cost before you receive the base layer, as opposed to less than half a meg for SVC and only two megs for MDC. Um, but as you can see from, we say, layer four on, our transmission cost as opposed to MDC has, uh, is, is reduced, and by the time you get to the highest quality, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's down by six, uh, six megs or so. Yeah, so what we have here is, as I said, the goal was to determine quality as transmission loss increases. So we have 10 levels of, incremental levels of packet loss. Um, we run each one of the, the, the streaming models uh, 16 times for each one of these, so it's, it, it's a pretty decent one. We have 95% confidence intervals, intervals in there as well, and they're relatively small, which is good. But you can see that for SVC, the loss can occur anywhere. It's, it's base layer, high layer, any layer in between, and you have no control over loss on the network, and we understand that as well. So you can see as loss increases, the achievable here scenario is, is, is pretty bad. For MDC, it's, it's, it's 2 dB better, but again, it's not really, it's not good enough because it's got constant changes, again, depending on the number of descriptions that are lost and what have you. When you look at ALD, which is the next one, where we're up there, we're, I won't say we're consistent over percentage of loss, but we're, it's a fairly decent high level um, for the reduction in uh, FEC that we're including. And you can see for the, the section distribution one, it's, it's realistically nearly consistent over time. It's a very, very small decrease. Um, but again, that's because of the number of datagrams that are being sent and because of the section allocation as well. Uh, what you see here is uh, transitions over time. So you're looking at a two-second example of quality changes over time. So we've got our layer sizes on the left-hand side, and you have your time underneath. As you can see with SVC, it really does depend on where the loss hits it. As, as quality goes, it's got some major transitions in it. MDC, not so bad. Again, it's based on the number of descriptions that are received, and you can see that um, it, it's, it's, it's within the block, let's say, it's between six, seven, down to three, with one, one little jump into two. For ALD, we're, we're, we're within the highest resolution, 87% of the time. I know now this still has movement in it, but you could have a, a relatively good consistency between layers five and layer six across your stream. Uh, you can see for the top one, with uh, the, the section distribution side of it, that um, it, it's pretty consistent in the higher layers. You've got layer seven, layers eight all the way through. Um, so I'm probably way ahead of my time, or way beyond my time, but the, the conclusion side of it. So we, we wanted it just to, to see how loss affected quality and see if there's anything we could do for it. And we found with, with ALD, we can reduce transmission cost. It provides consistent-ish levels of quality. Uh, it, it's got datagram equality, which is very good. I, I'll just explain this slightly. With datagram equality, you can, each, descript, each datagram is, is identical uh, within a GOP. So it doesn't matter where, where loss occurs in a datagram or which datagrams are lost, it's cumulative over time. And what that does is it pushes all the loss to the end and pushes all the loss to the highest. So it's the highest layers you're always going to lose. And that's why we, we, we added additional error correction to the highest layers to kind of mitigate that point. Um, it does reduce the effects of datagram loss. Uh, it's scalable video is beneficial for heterogeneous devices. Um, we include a, what we classify as a sufficient percentage of error correction, and as I said, high, high levels of stream quality. Um, we have some related work. Um, we, we tend to classify ourselves as hybrid, hybrid schemes. Um, you've got your SVC, you have your MDC, and there's a number of uh, uh, hybrid schemes in there where they look at benefits of including ideas from SVC and, and, and MDC and bringing them all together. And uh, that's, that's the end of me, I hope.
Well, not the end of me, hopefully, but, you know. <laughs> that just sounded wrong. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, sir. How does this approach actually uh, compare to layered FEC, which also kind of considers the dependency between the... the yeah, we, well, th that was one of the... Uh, that I didn't go through the hyper schemes. That, that was one of them where they're looking at uh, FECs on the higher layers and they include... That FEC includes, includes the FECs on the lower layers as it builds its way through. Um, build any systems that evaluates mine against theirs. Um, I, I just, it's like, this is only like our initial toe in the water just to see what it's like and just for, by modifying it, it's fine. Now, we, we have talked about going back and using their um, layered FEC side to see if we can get increased benefits um, of building the ALD and then including the FEC sections for, for lower stuff. But it's, it's, it's on a long list that we have at the moment. But hopefully we'll get there. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, very nice talk. Um, <laughs> in one of your slides, you showed that there is additional overhead compare your solution against SVC, right? Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, back cost. And then uh, a slide later, you compare the uh, video quality under different uh, packet loss ratio, right? And do you think it's a fair comparison? Because the bit rate is going to be different using uh, 21, page 21. 21, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so. So the throughput it would be different. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So like my, as I said, that my goal was just to determine how, what kind of quality is achievable depending on loss. So I have like, as I said, I, I remove I remove transmission mechanisms and that kind of stuff. So I understand that the transmission costs of SVC for eight layers is going to be twenty seven percent lower, right? Lower than than our yeah. system. So you could build that extra twenty seven percent with either FEC or, or TCP yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or that kind of mechanism. But I, I just wanted to see how does loss affect it. Mm. But wouldn't it be better if you encode them at different bit rate so that you can compensate them, put them, put everybody at the same level to do a comparison? Um, you see my point. Right? Yes, yes, it's 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 something. We, we it's 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 on the list of things that that my my, my supervisor has for me to look at. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank you very much.